All right, it is 11.02 a.m. sharp, and I'm going to kick things off. So welcome, everyone, to our weekly community AMA. Um, as always, we host these every Friday at roughly 11, 11.15, depending on schedules. Um, to give you guys updates about the community, where we are at Testnet, um, any kind of major milestones that we've hit, any bugs we've fixed, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes these are just voice only. Sometimes they include video walkthroughs, but we're really, really happy that you've joined us again today for this week's update. So before we kick off and I hand off to the engineering team for a couple of quick updates, I wanted to note this week's gonna be a little bit short. Um, for those following us on our testnet journey, um, last Friday, we officially reset the testnet for the first time. Um, had a bunch of quests that we launched last week related to kind of getting you um, with your wallets and your nodes back up and running. Um, and so, yeah, it's been kind of like just re-onboarding week, not really many new kind of like features or tools updates, but we are diligently working in the background to drop a bunch of really cool stuff for you very soon. So on that note, I'm gonna hand over uh, the mic to Chris Mahoney, um, our lead web engineer, and he's gonna give us a couple of updates on how's it going, how it's going post-reset and um, a couple of the things that they've been working on this week. Cool. Uh, could you hear me all right? Yep, loud and clear. Awesome. Well, hello, everybody. Um, yeah, so uh, we've had a pretty, um, a pretty good, solid, um, chunk of engineering since last we talked um, taking place after the reset. Um, obviously, been doing some investigating into um, problems that come up in the node discussion channel, which is always helpful. Um, and those have been kind of fewer and far between um, since then. Uh, in terms of uh, um, the website, and also um, I could speak for um, the gaming side of things. Uh, we're we're actively working on um, kind of the the earliest um, MVP of the Unity gaming and JavaScript SDKs. Um, they are both meant to uh, sit on top of the same smart contract um, environment. Uh, whether you're developing in a web browser or you're developing in Unity. Um, and uh, we're doing that very deliberately, which takes some time up front, a lot of kind of architectural planning and thinking. Um, but I think what we're going to end up with is, is a really good workflow for people that aren't familiar necessarily with um, how smart contracts operate or why they'd even use one. Um, as well as a set of um, really straightforward kind of interactive tutorials um, that I'm hoping to put together uh, initially for us internally, um, but then those could probably become uh, part of quests y'all have been doing. Um, but uh, just a really quick one, two, three introduction to how do I mint an NFT? Um, how do I use this template marketplace contract to interact with it and uh, allow me to transfer and send um, assets to other people? Um, so I think down the road a little bit on the on the map for these quests um, is a lot of that activity. I think it'll be really interesting because uh, it does break us out of the very early um, uh, UX associated with these existing web resources, such as the wallet. Um, and it gives us a good chance to integrate with the Explorer as well. So um, I'll be putting that together in some technical docs that uh, can be used for those weeks. Um, but yeah, the velocity is going... Uh, quite fast the past few days on these uh, fronts and pretty much it's just a matter of how many methods we can implement over the next few days. So 
um yeah i'll i'll keep keeping you posted on um when those things might pop up as releases in the future for y'all to use Thank you, Chris. So yeah, basically buckle up. We're about to start a bunch of really interesting launches and quests related to creative NFTs, EVM, Unity, SDKs. So for all of the artists and creators in the community, um, this will be a really exciting time for us. Um, I just saw that our CTO, Will Carter, joined the room. So um, sorry, Will, but I'm also going to call you out. And are there any additional updates or things you want to tell the community before we kick off and jump into questions? Uh, sorry, I'm late. I don't know what all Chris Mahoney covered, but I think today's going to be a quick one anyway. And then next week we could do something a little more exhaustive in terms of updates. Um, so I, I would say I think we're probably good for this week. We can jump into the questions. Sounds good. All right. So yeah, a bunch of people dropped uh, questions in the AMA channel this week. We've also got a couple from Twitter. Um, so I'm going to just start cruising. So our first question is by TTYQRA, who asks, what is the incentive to participate in the testnet? The documentation says something like all earned coins will not go to the main network and we will not receive them. So basically, TTYQRA is asking, what is in this for me? Fake internet points. Um, I mean, there's, it, it, they're right. We're not currently looking at moving any of the coins um, from testnet over to mainnet or even beta net over to mainnet. Um, the incentives right now are fairly kind of ephemeral. Like, um, you know, we're keeping track of participation. So there's, there's a reputation aspect to it, um, uh, which may come into some sort of incentivization later on. Um, whether that's in the form of coins or, you know, preferred accesses like, say, an ambassador um, or, you know, maybe a subsidized validator, stuff like that. Um, and then also just experience with the chain. So, you know, like with a lot of emerging technologies, um, you know, just getting in and understanding it at the ground level early on kind of gives you a leg up when you're um, looking to build new experiences. So, um, and, and also gives you a chance to kind of guide the development of the technology um, based on the feedback that you give and kind of your participation in the discussion on what's important to you as a creator. So I would, I would say like, yeah, there's no hard, um, you know, financial incentives, but, um, you know, eventually there may be um, specific, there, there definitely will be in mainnet. Um, but right now it's really about, you know, joining a community um, uh, building a reputation in the community as being someone who's like um, helpful and engaged and then yeah, gaining experience in the technology and helping shaping it. Awesome. Thanks, Will. Now I'm going to jump into a couple of kind of like technical questions that people are asking about. And one that I really wanted to kind of bring up just because Vauban asks, hello, is it normal that I must share my private key to send and receive tokens? Or can I do it directly for my MetaMask? I feel like this is like a security question that we should address. No, never share your private key <laughs> with anyone ever. Like that's a huge no-no. Um, if anyone asks you for your private key, it's like ninety-nine point nine nine percent a scam. Um, it to send transaction. The only time you should ever use your private key really is um, if you're backing it up somewhere safe, or like you're trying to store it somewhere, um, and you should be very careful with that. Um, or you're, you know, using it to set up a new wallet. And again, you should only do that with wallets that you trust. Um, trust meaning, you know, they're from a verifiable source. Um, usually it means like typing in the wallet URL yourself um, so that you're not, you know, subject to a man in the middle attack, someone sending you like a fake wallet and, and hoping you enter your private key into it. Um, but you should definitely never send your private key to anyone. You should be able to do everything straight from MetaMask or the web wallet or any other wallet you set up using the private key. But always keep that private key secure and private. That's why it's the private <laughs> key. Awesome. Thanks, Will. Um, Shredder656 asks, any new news on the node form, lol? <laughs> I, I feel you, Shredder. Um, yes, we're we're gonna be onboarding 
we're, we're selecting the first uh, cohort today. Uh, we'll be onboarding them next week. And um, like I said, it's probably going to be a few more weeks until we do a widespread onboarding process, but it's likely that we'll have at least a second cohort come on board um, after the first one before it, you know we open it up to the water community. So um, I think we'll have a little bit more news maybe next week, but uh, currently that's, that's what the status is. El Drago asks, will there be a limited amount of validators when Lamina One is officially launched? No. Um, one of the cool things about uh, our platform compared to some proof of stake platforms is that we can support a huge amount of validators. Um, usually, uh, the, so there is like a caveat to that. Um, anyone who builds a layer two blockchain on top of Lamina One, um, and some of those layer two blockchains are, you know, we're architecting so that they'll provide metaverse services, like some of the services we provide, um, we outline in the white paper. So you've got like identity providers, storage providers. Um, those will all run on what's called subnets, and those subnets will have their own rules for who can be a validator on them. Um, anyone who is a validator on those subnets has to also be a validator in Lamina 1. Um, but they can set up their own restrictions. Like they could say, maybe it's just a permissioned layer 2 blockchain on top of ours. Or, um, you know, you have to put up at least, you know, $10,000 in, in stake in order to become a validator. So Anyone will be able to become a validator um, in Lambda 1 uh, when we go to mainnet, but some of the subnets that are built on top of ours or those layer 2 blockchains that are built on top of ours might have their own restrictions on whether or not you can validate for them. Um, so yeah. And I think like once we do the subnet week, which will probably, that's probably going to be in April, um, We'll, we'll do some like quests around setting up subnets, what that means, talking a little bit about how we're going to leverage that in our architecture. Um, we, can, we can dig into that a little bit more. Adgroat from Twitter asks, when test mint NFTs? <laughs> I mean, technically you could test mint some now. Um, I think we, we have a NFT week coming up here soon. Um, and obviously part of our Unity SDK, which is coming up um, in a few weeks, that's going to provide some tools for letting you launch and mint some NFTs, um, I think directly from within Unity. Um, but also, I think we're also hoping to have some you know, basic tools for kind of templatized NFTs as well. So if you know how to create NFTs, and there, there are plenty of platforms out there that help you generate smart contract code for, you know, minting NFT collections, you're welcome to use those, generate the smart contract code and, and update, up, um, upload them now to the Lamina One network. Um, but we will have like some dedicated um, quest weeks directly for this. Um, and I think you might want to wait if you're not familiar with the EVM environment already, you might want to wait until we release the documentation for it soon. Jacko Girl asks, could you give us a sneak peek of the tasks and quests we'll have through the rest of Testnet and what we'll be exploring once we reach Betanet? Also, will the transition from Testnet to Betanet result in another reset? So Will, I'm gonna take the first half of this one and then I'll pass off to you, but basically, to give you a sneak pack peek of the quests that are coming up, um, I'm going to tease this just to the AMA channel because this is where our most engaged followers are. But next week, we're going to be launching a crowdsource competition um, asking for NFT artists um, across the community to submit some original works to be the first people who are minted on the Lamina One testnet. It's going to be super exciting. We're just finalizing the rules now, but basically that'll be kind of what next week's quests are about. Um, the following week will be all about um, really pressure testing the heck out of our new Explorer. Um, 
that has been has gone live up on the Lamina One Testnet homepage. Um, as of this week, um, if you haven't checked it out yet, definitely do so. But we'll have a bunch of quests that are kind of designed to really, really kind of push the limits of that. And then after that, we're dropping EVM NFT week. Um, we've got a couple of weeks. One is going to be focused on just simply buying, trading um, NFTs on the Lamina One platform. Again, this will be kind of using uh, Lamina One creators assets to help us test and really showcasing L1 creators. And then the second week will be more focused on sort of smart contract generation. Um, and yeah, as Chris kind of said, he's been working his butt off working on getting up and a V1.0 NFT marketplace and also figuring out, you know, how do we integrate that into the upcoming Unity SDK, which will come out shortly after uh, NFT week? So that's kind of like a sneak peek on what's coming up. Again, it's about to get really, really interesting for creators in particular on our chain. I think we've been really focused, obviously, more on node operation and validation and sort of like the infrastructure tech aspects of the chain. But it's about to get beautiful and interesting. So I'm really excited about that. Um, anyway, so Will, I'm going to pass it off to you for the second parts of the question, which is, you know, what will we be exploring once we reach beta net and will the transition from test net to beta net result in another reset? Yeah, so I think I've kind of hinted at this or maybe I've, I've talked about it in previous calls. Um, beta net is really all about uh, testing the network in a state that's as close to mainnet as possible for a while. So that's um, the the uh, the economic parameters. Um, it's the technology itself. Um, it's doing benchmarking of the platform. So all of that will require a new network reset. In fact, we're probably going to have two more network resets. We're going to have at least one more in testnet. Um, that's going to be basically upgrading to um, a network state that's again as close to beta net as possible, testing that um, pretty extensively over a few weeks. And then we'll move over to um, what we hope is the less reset, which will be the beta net launch. Um, and beta net is supposed to be as stable as possible. So beta net really shouldn't reset. Um, but yeah, in beta net, you, you know, ideally you'll have access to the Unity SDK um in all its glory um at least a couple of some of the meta metaverse as a service um services that we outlined in the white paper um we'll be playing around with those um hopefully we'll have some you know demo projects that we can share um that are built on top of the network um stuff like that all right, so we've got about 10 minutes left. So I'm actually going to jump to a couple of kind of broader questions about the platform and the community as a whole. We got a bunch of really interesting questions just kind of around what is Lamino One about? What are you, what's your vision for the future? So Ethan Web3 in particular, I think this is a great one, asks, what are the biggest impediments L1 is currently facing, i.e. heartburn in the Web3 space? Yeah, it's something what we talked about. What keeps you up at night, Will? <laughs> yeah, it's just... I mean, it's probably the same thing that keeps a lot of you guys, um, you know, asking a bunch of questions in our Discord and generally, like, keeps my parents from joining Web3. Um, it's really hard to use, not only for the users, um, but also for the creators. So, you know, that's that's really what we are focusing a lot of our our effort on innovating on in this space is is making sure that our tooling is is really streamlined and focused at making you know creators lives easy um we call it like batteries included so um if you're new to web3 uh you can focus on really creating really engaging experiences and let us do all the heavy lift for you on the blockchain side of things and like i think we talked about this again last week but like we think you know to make web3 um, and Lamina One successful, it's really about building, um, you know, really enjoyable experiences first, and then having the Web3 capabilities tagged on as um, an enhancement to those experiences rather than being at the forefront of those experiences. So that's, that's what we're working on is making sure that the tooling is really like laser focused um, 
towards solving the the user friction of both the creators and the users of their experiences. Bravo John eighty nine asks, "Why are there layers?" Which honestly could be like an entire education series, which is a great question. <laughs> but just as a as a quick overview, uh, which which layers do you think we're talking about here? Is this like a layer one and a layer two kind of blockchain? Platform? Yeah, I think I think it's yeah, it's like a confusion on like what's the difference between layer one, layer two, like what why do yeah, they exist and question. what do they do? An analogy for those, I mean, a lot of people have probably heard like the notion of a tech stack um, and, and a layer like blockchain layers are fairly similar um, in a tech stack. You know, usually the bottom of the stack is, is like uh, hard, very close to the hardware. And then the top of the stack is supposed to be highly abstracted um, so that, you know, depending on where you as a creator are working, whether you're trying to create, like I was saying just now, really immersive experiences and you don't really want to deal with all the engineering effort involved at the bottom of the stack, then that, you know, you can build up there. And then for those of you who are building, um, say, infrastructure solutions where your product is, you know, closer to the bottom of the stack that other people can build on, um, then you can work at that layer. But uh, broadly speaking, you know, we're, we're providing the layer one. So roughly the, the bottom of, of the Web3 stack. Um, some people call it layer zero, actually, because um, we actually allow people to build their own blockchains on top of us um, really simple, like uh, really easily. Um, but yeah, layer one is supposed to be like a base layer infrastructure that provides, you know, a consensus engine um, and provides like uh, a secure environment where you can uh, store blockchain state, recover blockchain state. Um, do governance on chain, stuff like that. And then all of the interesting applications that you want to build on top of that, whether it's a specialized blockchain that, say, um, you know, is responsible for managing land in a game, um, that can all be built on top of it. So you, you have these different layers so that uh, creators who don't have all of the resources needed to build everything from the ground up every time, um, it gives them a way to to enter at the point that's you know that that meets their requirements. Um, if everyone had to build like the entire tech stack, um, very few projects would get off the ground. So that that's like a high level overview. Awesome. So we've got a couple of questions that are kind of similar. One is from 3DX, who asks, "Will Lamina One be its own chain? Any upcoming collabs?" And sort of relatedly, Valhalla via Twitter asked, you know, you want to create a solution for the metaverse and it'll probably have games and a bunch of other things. You know, this is a big goal that requires a lot of time and effort. Will you have partnerships with omni-channel projects, both NFT and blockchain? Basically, are we looking to partner with people and is that part of Lamina One's strategy? Yeah, I would say it's the focus of our strategy. We will be our own chain, but... Um... The focus of our strategy here is is to build an open metaverse um, where anyone can be a provider of various metaverse services. And so that means, you know, we're not going to be building everything. We're going to be collaborating and partnering um, with a lot of different projects and companies to provide those services and those experiences. Um, I don't think, I mean, we, we've, we've announced the HTC collaboration already. Um, we have a lot more in the works, but I think um, this will come out in due time. But uh, yeah, again, th this is a huge focus of our strategy, um, which I think is something that um, really separates us from a lot of the Web3 projects I've personally been involved in in the past is, you know, from the beginning, we're not really uh, a huge tech focused organization or technology a directed organization. Uh, we actually focus on building solutions for, um, you know, actual solutions that people need. And so a lot of that means going and seeing what people are, people are building, um, seeing what keeps them up at night and making sure that we're creating solutions for them um, rather than creating solutions um, for problems that don't exist. So, yeah. 
Jack Luke Girl asks, I know you're planning swag giveaways for the end of Testnet, but are there plans to make merch available for sale, perhaps with some or all of the profit rolling over into the L1 ecosystem fund or any or other community building funds? I crave me an L1 hoodie with shoestring ties. So Jack Luke Girl, I feel you. Um, I am also going to use this AMA to kind of preview some exciting news on the Lamina One brand front. So as you guys kind of all can see, like the Lamina One brand, we're very black and white. We're super minimal and scrappy, but we've been working um, to do kind of like a really nice rebrand that we're hoping to launch around Betanet or once we kind of like get up get um, a more solid platform up and running beyond testnet where we're gonna have a shiny new look that allows us to grow um, at the speed and rate that we currently are. So no merch drops right now, but once we launch the new Lamina One brand, like, yes, I already have swag mock-ups and everything in my back pocket. So get ready for that. Um, it's in the works right now, and the whole team is super excited about it. But yeah, we're gonna get a new a new look pretty soon. Um, and then the L1 hoodie with shoestring ties will be available. That said, for um, participants in our um, in our testnet giveaway and crew three quests, I will say I have an entire box full of Lamina One brand 1.0 hoodies, like literally in my storage space right now that we're going to be doling out to winners. Um, so uh, by participating in QuestNet, you can get your chance to get that like iconic, hopefully um, Lamina One 1.0 OG hoodie that only, um, you know, our main investors, founders and core team have. So pretty exciting, pretty cool. Keep with us on Crew3 and keep ask answering those questions for the community. And um, you may see a, an L1 hoodie uh, in your future. Um, okay, next up, our last question, I think, which is kind of funny. I mean, Erasmus asks, I think this is definitely a question for Will, but what are your thoughts on the Coinbase layer two and their decision to build on Ethereum using OP stack? Yeah, I think it actually makes sense for them um, and what they're trying to do. Uh, Coinbase is obviously, you know, handling um, a lot of financial assets, financial focused assets. Um, and so, you know, what's important to them when we're talking about um, meeting the requirements of our partners and customers, what's important to them largely is going to be security, given, you know, uh, you know, their regulated U.S. exchange. They're dealing with an immense amount of financial assets. So, you know, building on the single largest uh, smart contract platform with, you know, the most broadly distributed, uh, at least in terms of like total value staked um, node community makes a lot of sense for them. Um, optimism, you know, I, I haven't followed optimism in a while, but um, I generally like the optimistic rollup approach. Um, so I can't, I won't say too much about, um, why they chose to use the OP stack other than it's a, it's a fairly interesting approach. Um, it does have its trade-offs with regards to like finality time and stuff, but I think, yeah, given, given the requirements for securing an immense amount of, um, of value, uh, Ethereum to me is, is a very logical choice for them. Um, and I'm sure they're they're going to be looking at branching out and being interoperable with as many chains as possible. But it seems like a, a good starting point for them. All right, and we're at time. So I am going to wrap things up. Thank you, everyone, for submitting questions. If we didn't get to your question this week, as Will said, we're going to have a longer one next week where we'll hopefully dive a little bit deeper. We'll give you guys kind of like a more... Uh, solid update at the top. Um, but yeah, we really, really appreciate you. Again, stay tuned next week. Um, a bunch of creative quests are going to really kick off and we're going to really start ramping up towards uh, launching of EVM and NFT marketplace stuff. So stay tuned. It's about to get exciting. And thank you all for joining. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Cheers, everybody. Bye,